Hello, I'm Dave Speakman. Today's video is a simple introduction to home recording. We're going to look at what you need to get so that you can make your own recordings, some simple choices, and then week by week we're going to pick different instruments and look at different ways of making it just sound better, just using the equipment that you've got. Before I had this studio, I did most of my recording at home, so I have a reasonable amount of experience of recording at home and getting really good results, to be fair. It is possible to get good results at home, it just requires a little compromise and it's understanding where you need to compromise and where you actually probably need to spend a little bit of money. The first thing that you need to think about having is something to record onto. So you need either a hardware recorder, it could be your mobile phone, it could be an iPad. Most people use some sort of computer. I use an Apple laptop and I also have a Hackintosh that I built which is basically a naughty desktop Apple Mac. The next thing that you need is some sort of audio interface in order to get sound into your computer. The built-in audio interfaces in your computer probably aren't up to the task. They make some of these that are class compliant as well, so you can use them with an iPad or an iPhone. I would personally use a computer and I'd be looking at the Focusrite interfaces. Aim to get something that has a couple more inputs than you feel you need now. If you think you're gonna get into recording, if you need one input, get one that has two. If you need two inputs, get one that has four. And that just gives you a little bit of room to grow into without having to spend far too much to start with. You can go up to around 48 inputs these days, just over a USB interface. The converters that are on even the cheapest Focusrite interfaces are better than the converters were on really high-end equipment 15 years ago. So whatever you get, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be up to the task and you're gonna be able to get a good sound. An audio interface takes the analog signal and converts it into a digital signal for your computer to understand. Usually these days we have audio interfaces like this Focusrite one, which actually has preamps built into it. So the preamplifier takes the microphone signal and makes it a little bit louder. We also have these switches for phantom power for microphones that need that. Usually we have a switch to roll off the, a bit of the low end and often there's a switch to switch the polarity. We'll talk about that in future videos. We'll talk about all three of these things in future videos. In higher end setups, you tend to go into the converters from separate preamps. So we've got some other preamps here. You might see on some of the audio interfaces that you look at the option to go in on ADAT. And that means that you can add preamps to that that use the ADAT interface, like these universal audio preamps here. Another option might be to just use a USB microphone because that works as a microphone and a USB interface all rolled into one. If you're just playing a keyboard, you could probably get away with just having some sort of MIDI keyboard. Now the MIDI keyboard doesn't actually make any sound itself, so you'll need some software to do that. And we'll also need some software to record into. Once you've got set up and you've chosen what computer you're gonna use, and you've bought your audio interface, you need to pick some software to use. The software that we use for recording is called a Digital Audio Workstation, or DAW for short. At the studio, we run two different DAWs. We run Pro Tools and we also run Logic. There's a free DAW called Audacity, which will work fine for you if you're just a beginner. There's various other ones that you can Google the pros and cons of if you like. I really like Pro Tools because I've been using it for a while and I'm quite fast on it. I also did the Pro Tools certification up to 210M and I would advise that the best thing that you can do is learn to use your DAW as well as you possibly can. There are loads and loads of courses online that you can do, quite a lot on YouTube. If you're using Pro Tools like I am, you can actually do the AVID certification. I went as far as 210M. If you want to follow someone who's really good, give Paul Maunders' YouTube channel a follow. Paul knows more about Pro Tools than anybody that I've ever met. So we're all set up with some sort of device to record into. We've got our audio interface and we've got the software. The next thing that we need to think about is what we're gonna record into that device. So if we've got guitars, now guitars we can literally, with our guitars, we can just plug them straight in. So we can come out of, out of the jack on your guitar, 
If your audio interface has some sort of high impedance, it'll say high Z, input or DI in, you can go straight in with your guitar and you don't really have to think about anything else. Now, if you're a singer or you're playing a purely acoustic instrument, or you want to get a more natural sound out of your guitar, you're gonna have to think about getting some microphones. There are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different models of microphones. And unfortunately, you can end up spending far too much money on them. The main types of microphones though are, you've got small diaphragm dynamic microphones. This Telefunken M60, that's a bit like an SM58 or something like that. It's just a posh SM58 really. Then we have large diaphragm dynamic microphones. I've got various of these. Um, there's just a few of the ones that I've got. We have small diaphragm condenser microphones. These are Telefunken ones again. Quite like the Telefunken mics. Large diaphragm condenser microphones. It's an AKG. 414. And lastly, we have things like ribbon microphones. This is my big AA mic. Now, ribbon microphones are quite delicate, so you need to be careful with them. Dynamic microphones tend to be very robust. Condenser microphones are somewhere in between. Probably to start with, if you're not really sure what to get, I'd start with something like an SM58, and then maybe think about getting some sort of small diaphragm condenser mic. Actually, I have a pair of these mics which are really good. Just grab them. Which are these Octavia. Now these are relatively inexpensive and these come as a little set and you can get them with different diaphragms. If anyone was looking to get something for recording acoustic guitar or acoustic piano, these would be an ideal microphone. I'm going to go through the specifics of different instruments as we carry on with this over the next few weeks. So if any of you have any questions about a particular instrument and you're struggling to record it, please do let me know and we'll talk about what microphones we can use to get a better sound, some inexpensive options and some expensive options for if you've been furloughed and you've got loads of money to spare. One of the more important items that you need to get really though is headphones because when you're recording, you don't want to hear things coming through speakers back. You need to have your headphones on so that you can't hear anything. These are Bayer Dynamic DT100s. They're quite common in recording studios, but really anything will do. There's lots of cheaper alternatives. The Audio-Technica headphones are particularly good. In reality, anything that you've got will do. So if you just add some little earbuds that you use for going to the gym or whatever, they'll be absolutely perfect, really. The next thing that you need to consider really is what space you're going to record in. Not everybody has the luxury of an acoustically retreated space, obviously. So we'll look at various options over the coming weeks of how you can improve the acoustics just at home. I used to do loads of recording just at home in the box room, upstairs in the spare room, and also just in my living room at home. And I did various things to improve the acoustics of those rooms quite cheaply, so we can talk about how to do that. Some of it just with things that you'll have just lying around your house ready to go. If you're recording an acoustic instrument, the space that the instrument is in plays a huge role in how that instrument sounds, and it probably plays a bigger role than the microphones that you use. So although it's not a necessarily a very sexy thing to spend your money on, acoustic treatment is probably the most valuable thing that you can buy. There are also various options of things that you can make as well. A lot of the bass traps here were bought from a company called GIK, but there's also a lot of bass traps that I made myself as well. So now that we've got all the equipment that we need, we just need to start recording. We always record in WAV files. That is the professional format that's used. And there are two different formats that people tend to go with, either 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz. Most people are still working at 48 kilohertz, and we want that file to be 24 bit. 48K, 24 bit is the professional standard in the UK. Like I say, some people are using 96 kilohertz, but if you're doing this to collaborate with other people, you have to think of the file size, and the file size with the 96 kilohertz files, they're gonna be absolutely enormous. The 48K ones are big enough. 
Quite often then, when you open your DAW, you'll have to create a track. Now there's various ways to do this, and as I said before, you really need to learn how to use your DAW properly. Okay, so I've just plugged this microphone straight into my audio interface. The first thing that I need to do is to name the track. When I name a track, the file name will follow the name of that track, so that's quite an important part of the process. Again, particularly for if you're gonna be passing these files on to other people, so people are actually gonna know what you've recorded. Now I record enable the track here, and then I adjust the gain on my audio interface. And I wanna take this up so that it is peaking at minus 18. One, 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 one. So that's about where I want it to be. Sometimes I do record a little bit hotter than that. I'll compress on the way in and I will go a little bit beyond minus 18. If I was recording something like a tambourine or something like that and I wanted it to be quieter, I'll record that quieter as well. But that's more advanced and we'll talk about things like that later on. So if you're gonna be collaborating with people, it's a good idea to think about using a click track to record to. Make sure that you write down the tempo that you're using so you can make the project, the name of the tune, and then the tempo that you're recording at. Some other considerations would be to have a folder perhaps in Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that, where you can all put things into together. Really labeling things up is what's really important here. If you name your tracks, then the files are gonna be named after those track names, and that makes organization much clearer. What you then want to do is take the raw audio and put that in the collaborative folder. Don't put any reverb or compression or anything like that on any of your tracks. You might think that your vocals sound better with the reverb on, but when it comes to mixing it at the end, it's gonna be much easier for the person who's mixing it if this is done during the mixing process. So I hope you found that useful. Please do like the video and subscribe. I've got some ideas of recording some things here. Obviously, I'm a guitarist, so I can show you how to record guitars straight away. Probably do that next week. We can perhaps have a look at how to record this piano. It's not exactly a toy, but it is something that we can look at doing. If you think that'd be interesting. Cool. And perhaps if we can get out of lockdown, I can go around to my mum and dad's. My mum's got uh, an upright piano, we can do that. I can't really play piano, but um, <laughs> we'll try anyway. I've also got some drums. So, so maybe we can have a look at how to do that as well. Maybe I can take them home and just to kick and snare and we can have a look at just recording some of that. We'll definitely do some stuff about vocals as well and improving acoustics. We have this makeshift vocal booth that my wife and I made here at the studio. And I've got like one of these SE reflection filters and stuff and pop filters, things like that. We can talk about various techniques as to why we use things like that and how you can improve things just using the things that you've got. Maybe there's a mattress or a blanket that you can use or you could just get a reflection filter because they're really good. But I've been thinking about taking these things home and doing it there just with minimalist equipment and some fairly cheap, inexpensive microphones and stuff. If you have any ideas of things that you'd like to see, please do let me know in the comments below. That'd be really helpful. If anyone wants to guest, we could do something over Zoom, whereby we look at your setup and perhaps look at a little way that we could improve what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.